it certainly, I wasn't there at the beginning of Kennecott because it began in 1926 and I was only born in 1948, so I wasn't quite there. But I came in the 50s and 60s uh, as a camper and then a counselor. But we would do knot time. We had, everybody would get it in the summer. They would get a little K or a, uh, or a big K. And then in the, in the 60s, we had a super K. But you had to do about 18 requirements to get your little K at camp. And they were really, it was so tough. We had, we had like seven week terms. It'd take you the whole seven weeks to get all your K requirements to get your little K with a letter. But one of the requirements was knot time. And so uh, I learned how to tie some knots in those days. I'm so thankful now that I, like this morning, my grandson and I were out trout fishing and we were, I was showing him how to tie uh, a hook on a line with the uh, with the fisherman's knot, and uh, well, thank you I learned these these knots at camp. So now I can tie knots, but I want to teach you a few knots if you'd like to. Uh, so so get you a piece of uh, of rope uh, about four feet long, some kind of a piece of soft rope, and um, and then let's 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 learn a few knots. Okay, so. Um, here is the slip knot. You probably don't know how to do this, but the slip knot, uh, you just hold the rope in your palms like this with the rope hanging down from the bottom of each palm. It's hanging over the top of your uh, forefinger. So you just take the right one and you just fold it over the left one. Very simple. Take the right end and just twist it and just fold it over the left end and then take the bottom rope, the one you just folded, and it goes, it goes under the loop, just like this. Top rope goes under the loop, and then you just grab the, the, the loop you brought through there, and then with the bottom rope, just pull your tie like that. It's called a slip knot because when you tie something, you can quickly untie the slip. Again, here we go. Twist the rope with your right hand over the rope with your left hand, and that rope would be on top. And then grab the underneath piece, just make a loop, and just go through the bottom and just pull it tight like that. So not <laughs> just like that to tie a figure eight knot, and that would be used for uh, taking the fray off the end of the rope if the rope was fraying on the end of the rope. But in this one, you'll just take the the uh, the rope and put it over the top of your left hand like that. Give yourself a little bit of slack. And then and then I'll just take the rope that goes over my left hand the rope that's closest to me. And I'll go around the other rope, all the way around. And then now you have a double uh, band here. And then you just go through the loop and pull it tight. You can see it's going to make an eight. Just like that, I'll do that again. So the rope, you just lay the rope over the top of your left hand and with your, with your right hand, you round behind this hand with your right hand. So we're just gonna go over the top of the rope over your left hand, all the way around it, all the way around it, and then through. And it makes an eight like that. And if that was on the end of the rope, it would keep the rope from fraying. And that key little figure eight right there. Uh, the third rope we're going to tie is uh, is called a girth hitch. And often you would see cowboys riding up to the uh, building and on their horse, and they would just quickly. Uh, so if you have a horse and you've got a like hitching post or something like that. Uh, so here's the here's the tree you want to tie to or the or the, or the uh, the hitching post, you just throw the rope over the top, and then the rope behind, which would be the end of the bridle, like this bridle would be on the horse or on the stick that you're trying to tie things to. But the rope goes over the top of the pole. It just comes around very simple, and it goes over your bridle, and then and then it goes right down through like that. Thank you, and it ties the horse to the pole. I'll do that one more time. So uh, here's your rope to your horse. You go over the hitching post. And then the one behind the post comes around 
and in front of your bridle and then around behind and then through that loop just like that. And then while we're at it, another one that I've used often is called the timber hitch. And the timber hitch would be used for if you want to drag something heavy, like a log out in the woods. It's the reason it's called timber hitch, where you're trying to just grab anything and just pull it. Um, uh, so you just do it like a girth hitch. So you're going to grab the log or the thing you want to pull out of the woods, maybe a down limb or a down tree or something. And you go over the top. And it's just like the girth hitch when you go across in front. But instead of going back through the pole, I'm just going to make several turns on my rope, just like that. And you, you can't believe. And what's great about this, you can you can do it quickly, and you can pull the, the tree out of the woods, and uh, and then. The great thing about it is that you can easily get it off the log if you're like in a hurry. And it pulls very tightly like that. You cool? I'll do that again real quick. So you throw your rope over the log and then you, you take the rope that comes from behind the log, put it across in front of the rope and then you just go behind that like that and then I'm just going to go over this part of the rope to go through the bottom floor just two or three times just like that it doesn't take a lot of time and as I said when you're done pulling one log through the woods it won't slip you can uh, you can quickly undo it and tie other locks quickly. The, uh, the square knot we use a lot um, is if you have two ropes of the same diameter and you want to tie them together so they don't come apart. Um, now these ropes, we have a red rope and a, and a white rope here, or orange rope, I guess, for you University of Texas fans. Uh, so if you want to tie two ropes of the same thickness together, then uh, we're just going to put one rope over the top. It doesn't matter which one. And then we're going to bring it under the other rope, just like that. So we'll just put one over the other one and then put the one that's on top behind. And then you've got a single knot. But then take the one that's on top of the other, like this one, the white's on top of the red. The red, as you can see, is under the white one. And then once on top, just put it on top again. This one you see is on top. Put it on top again. And then just put it under the orange rope. And it's, it looks really cool like that. And it's very tight. It'll hold two ropes together very tightly. Once again, uh, quickly, you just take your two ropes, put one on top of the other, it doesn't matter which one, and put it under orange rope and again the one that's on top the white rope's on top of the orange rope just put that on top the one that's on top put it on top and then go under the orange rope and the square knot okay that was little k that was four knots i think little k was four knots big k was seven knots okay here we go big k so uh, it's amazing the memories this was like 50 years ago and i still remember all this stuff from k1 is great out the memories going forever and ever. Um, so the sheet bend, if, if, the, if this rope is smaller and this rope is thicker, it's better to do a sheet bend. And a sheet bend is like the square knot, except you start off with a little loop in one of the ropes, doesn't matter which one, and you just hold the loop with your thumb and forefinger. And then with the other rope, the thicker rope, if you will, you'll just go under the loop. And, and through the little loop, just boop. And then, and then just go around the loop, just around the loop, not your hand, just the loop. And so you go around the loop, and then as you come back around with your white rope, watch this, 
I was going to go over the top of one of the orange ropes and back under the white rope. That would be, that would be very tight for two ropes of different uh, thicknesses. I'll do it one more time. So you make a loop, a loop with one rope, pull it with your thumb and forefinger, take your white rope and go up through, up through the hole, and then around the loop, just the loop, just like that, and then over the orange rope and just under the white rope. Bam! Sheep in. That's five, six knots, big K. What else can I do? Okay, I, I remember another one from K one day. So this is called a sheep shank. And they would, I guess, use this in the days of shepherding sheep when the rope was too long and they wanted to put tie slack, uh, take slack out of the rope. They would quickly go to the middle of the rope and, and this, like the sheep herders would tie, would take one rope and, and again, I'm gonna start with them down here where they're hanging out of the bottom of my hands and coming over the top of my hands. And I don't want a big loop, but I'm gonna take the right one and just make a loop over the left one, just like that. Just twist and right over the top, like that. So it's right over the top. Right now we do it one more time. Just over the top. Okay, there's two. I'm gonna hold both of them with this hand. I'm gonna do one more. And these are not large loops, they're just small loops. Now here's the trick. The middle loop has to go over the top of the one on the right and under the one on the left. And then I reach through the left one and I grab that side. I reach through the right one and grab the side of the middle and I pull the middle out a little bit. This will take you some practice. And that takes up slack in the middle of the rope. So now the rope is shorter than it was. I'll do that one more time. So I'm gonna hold the rope out of the bottom of my hands I'm going to let it slide down here on my right side. So with my right hand, I'm going to make a loop over the rope on the left hand. Then I'm going to make another loop with my right hand, like that. And then one more loop, just like that. Not very big loops. And again, I want the middle loop to go over the one on the right and under the one on the left. And I'm gonna reach through to grab the side of that middle loop. And I'm gonna reach through the back and grab the side. And I'm gonna pull, keeping these ropes in my hands. And I'm gonna pull a little slack and I'll pull the slack out. Bam. And make a sheep shank. Isn't that so cool? So I'm gonna teach one more knot. Uh, this one's really important. If you're ever trying to rescue, uh, this one is used for, you know, if someone, you have to pull someone up, like if you're climbing a cliff or in a cave, or, or you need to put a loop around somebody, but you don't want it to slip and make the person tight. You just want it to stay the same size. Uh, it's called a bowling. And a bowling is really fun to tie because it's got a cute story. But on a bowling knot, you'll have the rope that's going up to the, uh, uh, to the to the belay person above and then with the bottom side of the rope I'm just going to make a loop and then with my top hand I'm going to hold it and again this loop is like this not like this but like that where it lays right over the top of the long rope and then with the bottom end of the rope and this is this is what I'm going to tie around the person like this um, I'm going to go up through the hole like a rabbit, a little rabbit right there. So I'm going to go up through the hole with that and the rabbit is going to go around the tree and then he's going to go as I come around the tree, he's going to go back down through the hole, right through that. I'm going to catch him. I'm going to tight, and then I'm going to have a knot that will hold tight to the mountain climber, and it will not slip there, pull it, so that's around the person to, to help the person up. Let's do it one more time. 
So this rope goes to the blade. This one goes around the climber, around their waist, and then you go up and first thing you do is make a hole for the rabbit to go through. And then we're gonna take the rabbit and we're gonna go up through the hole, around the tree, going out of the way and down through the same hole that he went up through. Through the hole around the tree and down through the hole. And you've got the, the rope around the person helping. It's called a bow. Uh, I'm going to give you a bonus. This is a fisherman's knot for all of you who like to go fishing. I want to love to go fishing with my kids and grandkids. So this is called a fisherman's knot. But um, let's just say that uh, Let's just say that this is the uh, this is the leader of the of the, um, the hook. So so this play like this is round. So I'm gonna go and this one goes to the fishing line right here. So I'm just gonna go around through the the eye of the hook, and I'm gonna go around once, I'm gonna go around twice. We'll go around three times and maybe even four times. And then we'll go back through this uh, this gap between the rope and the hook. And let me tell you something, folks, that is not going to come off when a big five pound rainbow trout gets on your line. Isn't that cool? It's so simple, it's unreal. You can use that a lot for a lot of different things. One more time. This is called the fisherman's knot. And maybe there's another name for it, but that's what we hillbillies call it. So picture this as the round hook on the top of the, uh, of the fish hook. So we're going to go through the hook, and here it goes back to the fishing rod. And so we're going we're to go, uh, or we're gonna go around behind it one time, just like you would ordinarily. But instead of tying it there, we're going to go around again, and again, and again. Sometimes with really thin fishing line, I'll go around it five times. And then through the little gap right there, just through the gap in the, uh, in the line, and then pull down tightly on the uh, fish hook with your fishing line. And that is not going anywhere. <laughs> Isn't that great? There's one more knot I'd love to teach you. And this is like big K plus. This is probably super K because it's like 10 knots. But in, in case, uh, we were trying to tie the rope to the flag pole, which we used to do uh, each morning. We'd raise the flag or lower the flag. And when you want to tie the rope to the pole, we just use a double half inch. And a double half inch is where there would be, uh, there would be one, one end of the rope would go over the pole. And then we would just tie a simple overhand knot like that. That's a, such a single half inch. And then we would take the rope and go through it again a second time and make the double half hitch like that. All right, great. And that would hold the rope to the pole even when the winds blew and flying. Do it one more time. Double half hitch, tying rope to a pole. Uh, single half hitch is just an overhand knot, just, just a little over the pole and down through your loop and then pull it up and take the short rope and pull up straight like that. That's the key. And then take the short rope again and do another little half hitch or an overhand knot. And then when you pull it tight, you have a double half hitch. And I wish every chief and princess would learn that so when the flag pole is raised, the rope would stay tight to the pole. Well, that's nine knots, and I would get little K was four, big K was seven, and super K I think was nine, so now you get your super K.